Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, Success Secrets Revealed with your host Ronald Coleman. Grateful for you to share some more time with us today and I want to tell you we are going to really love our guest today, Dave Austin. He's a high performance coach and he has a lot of great wisdom and knowledge both from personal experience and also being out being out in the world as, as a professional coach. And Some of the people he's worked with are, are just amazing. One short story before I go on, when the Red Sox were playing the LA for the uh, MB, for the um, championship, I believe he had coached both those head coaches. But I'll let you tell him that story. But that's the level of high-performance coaching that Dave Austin plays at, and that's who's going to be our guest today. First, I want to tell you a little bit about the show. Uh, Success Secrets Revealed was created because of my radio show, Internet Marketing and Business Solutions with Ronald Koeman. We have a 1.7 million uh, reach, and it's a one-week show, but because of COVID, they're not manning the station right now. They are um, just running reruns. I didn't want to stop giving to uh, my audience and anybody else who uh, uh, needed to hear and, and learn things, especially in these times. I didn't want you to hear something that was, you know, great information a year ago. You know, today we, we might need something a little more relevant. So I started this show, Success Secrets Revealed, and I've been so blessed to have such a, a great collection of people come on and share from all different vantage points and walks of life. So there's always a little something for everyone, no matter what area uh, you're playing in in that life. Uh, and there, uh, no guest gets paid to come on the show. I'm not paid to come on the show. No guest pays to come on the show. Everybody is here just to give um, of of ourselves to you. We are sponsored by RCS Online Solution. That's my company. Covers the the cost of everything, and we basically help. Uh, business owners and entrepreneurs attract, convert, and retain their ideal customers and clients using internet marketing uh, techniques and methods. And, and you know, that's it for, for all that. So uh, now I want to talk to you about, I'm going to read a little bit about Dave's bio, and then I'm going to bring him on. Dave Austin brings out the best in his clients, many of which are the elite and professional athletes you watch on TV every day. He is a highly sought after mental performance coach who has worked not only at the professional sports level, but also at every other level along the way. From little league to the big leagues, from youth sports to high school, and all the way through college level and above, these principles not only work on the field, but they also go from locker room to boardroom as his work translates exponentially well for companies, entrepreneurs, and sales teams. His methods are focused and productive, and his results speak for themselves. Please help me welcome Dave Austin. Dave, how are you? Hey, I'm good. Pleasure. Pleasure to be with you today, Ronald. Thank you for having me on. Here's the, 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 the clap wheel. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much for coming on. I'm so grateful uh, to have you here today. And I know we started talking right after uh, a misfortunate event um, with uh, Bernie, and we'll be getting into that in depth. But uh, if you just want to tell the listeners a little bit more about who you are and uh, how this all came about, uh, your career and stuff. Well, you know, I'm known as a high performance coach, and I started, I was a professional athlete myself. I was a world ranked tennis player at one time. And, you know, when you're out there, you know, trying to be your best, right? Your mindset is your biggest ally or your greatest distractor. And so, you know, I dove in, even though I have degrees in psychology, I went a little bit beyond, you know, the, you know, way beyond that. And to keep advancing myself, when you travel the world on the tennis tour, you learn a lot in different cultures. And I would read a lot. And so it just kept developing you know, more how important your mindset is, is, is everything to be successful. And so um, that led me into, you know, working with the U.S. Olympic team, working with pro, I've had four players become MVPs in Major League Baseball. You mentioned, you know, with the World Series a couple of years ago, I had coached, you know, the manager of the Dodgers and I had coached the managers of Boston Red Sox. It was a unique experience. I went, gee, either I'm really experienced or I'm kind of getting old. No. <laughs> you know, because I, I coached them when they were playing for the Dodgers. Uh, wow. And now they're head coaches. You know, Roberts was our center fielder and Alex Cora was our second baseman. So there you have it. And uh, but, the you know, I would say today, at least 50 percent of my business 
is with uh, CEOs, high level CEOs or executive teams. Because once you start learning these principles, it makes such a drastic change in every aspect of your business. And a lot of things that we talk about are overlooked. You know, you go to MBA, I've, I've, I've lectured at Harvard and it was funny because I didn't know what I have, you know, I, I kind of joked about it. Well, I wasn't smart enough to go to this school, but now I can teach at it, right? Or whatever, or lecture at that it. A lot. <laughs> but, um, you know, I've, I've gone into this and I've had, a, you know, been blessed to have a lot of success at a very high level. Even with Navy and, and Army, the Army Rangers, the Navy SEALs, I've been blessed to work with them. My dad was a uh, lifelong, you know, he was a Navy chaplain. So for me to be able to work, you know, with the military too, is, is, a, is a real honor. Um, so that's a little bit of my background, but I really would love to start this because this is why we reconnected. I was on your show. I don't remember when it was, was it a year ago or two years ago? I, I, I can't remember. It was about that. Yeah. I don't have the exact date, but there is, we have it up on YouTube. That's on my internet marketing and business solutions with Ronald Kuhlman. So yeah. And but thank what, you too. Well, thank you. What brought us back together again for today was Bernie Dorman, an amazing man. And uh, I met Bernie in 2006 and he's the CEO of CEO Space. And then now, you know, September, his incredible wife is uh, the CEO. They kind of, it was, it was kind of, Bernie always had foresight of seeing things in advance. In fact, funny story. The first time I spoke on the CEO Space stage, was in 2007, and, um, and when I when he was introducing me, he said things. I'm like, oh, I thought it was my turn to speak, you know, because he said some things. I'm like, I don't know. He was talking about that, you know, I mentor presidential candidates. I do this. I'm going. I've never done that, you know. So so I'm like, and then it, then he introduced me. He had enough of of you know real things in there, but I'm thinking, what's that? But so we jokingly called. Well, he he Bernie size you, but. As I've learned over the years, he just sees things in advance. He really yeah. did. And yeah. all those things he's talking about, I have coached presidential candidates. I have done that now. He saw it before I knew it. It was just something about that gift. And that's why, you know, in the last several years of CEO Space, he brought September in to really be more involved in running the day to day. Not that he knew COVID you know, virus would come. I mean, you don't have that vision, but somehow, you know, he put himself in a place that if he wasn't there, the show would go on. And I think that's an important uh, message for all leaders out there that, you know, I think, you know, I deal with so many leaders, but one of the things that is so important is to really get your team involved. You know, when you try to do it all yourself and this is my way and get mad and punish anybody if they don't do it your way. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a, um, a method or a recipe for failure. But when you encourage and you lift people up and you use people in their different expertise, you bring them all together, man, the company can flourish. And then if you happen, something happens, you're gone. Well, you know what? You, you can still go forward. And, and unfortunately, that doesn't happen every day. But it's one thing that I really emphasize when I go and work with a company, getting everyone to be to, to feel like they're contributing something of value. And it's the leader who's got to create that atmosphere. That at, at atmosphere inspires people to do better, to be more. So Bernie, going back to him for a moment, you know, last week, you know, he got coronavirus. His son worked at a, um, a car dealership and a salesperson didn't even know he had it. He got it, you know, because he's dealing with customers, came home, and, you know, unfortunately, he gave it to Bernie and to September. Fortunately, September seems to be moving through it and we'll get through it. But, um, you know, unfortunately, it, it didn't work out for Bernie. But his last text on the day he passed, he says, please, everyone out there, know this is serious. A lot of people will say it's a hoax. They say, well, this is political. You know, it's just a hoax. The truth is, is we're learning every day that it's real. You know, this is not a political disease. It's not an American disease. It's worldwide. Yeah. And the world, most of the world's handling it better than we are right now. So we just need to take responsibility ourselves. You know, again, going back to leadership, I always, you know, the first thing to do is become aware. 
When you're aware, you can see things through different eyes. And then responsibility is what can I do in this case? What's my responsibility? When you take responsibility, then you move into empowerment. Man, when you're empowered, people will follow you because you are staying aware because we all have habits that maybe not service well. When you're aware, oh wait, that's an old habit that doesn't fit in this scenario right now. Are we willing to, to shift and change with new facts? If we get grounded and hold on to these old facts that we carry forward, then we're not gonna be as open to, to move our companies to the highest ground. I find that a lot actually. It's, it's, it's very interesting how that is. So awareness will lead us and then how, what's responsibility? Too many people say, well, you know, that this and that, and they, they put everything outside them. They go, these are the conditions I was dealt with. No, you have conditions, you know, it's not like these things aren't real, they're real, but who are you? What are you, responsibility are you gonna do to move forward in the best way, smart way? Because I have companies right now thriving, even as bad as this all is, we talk each week and we see how can we, maybe you have to do things differently, but we're always exploring how we can move forward and come out of this stronger. And it's, it's really in that dialogue. You know, when I said mindset, how important it is, it's not just knowing something, it's living it daily. What are you doing as a practice? When I became a world ranked tennis player, I didn't stop practicing. I practice more. So same thing goes for your mental capabilities is that we got to feed that which we want to grow and starve. That's what we would like to, to die. Right. Yep. And so Bernie, for me, you know, it's funny, you know, I, as I said, I joked about Bernie sizing, right. But the moment he passed too, it just all of a sudden I realized, oh my gosh, how real this became, but also I thought about the memories of all the people I've met because of Bernie Dorman at CEO space. You know, I wrote Be a Beast, the book, it's a best-selling book worldwide. I wrote it with Roger Anthony. Where did I meet Roger Anthony? Oh, at CEO space. And I can just go down all the leaders that came together that just in the right energy, he was really big on cooperation, collaboration, right? In 2009, he asked me to give a talk on collaboration. And as I was getting prepared for it, I got, I, I entitled my talk, the three C's, community, collaboration. Let's see, now I'm forgetting all the community, collaboration, cooperation, right? Those are the three C's of, of successful business. Cause he really wanted me to deliver that message. Cause I deal with NFL football or major league baseball, where it looks like we're competing against the other team. Well, we are competing the other team, but it's really more about us. What are we doing to win rather than, you know, uh, trying to compete against someone like, you know, in business, it's about what can we do within our company to win for us? Not about, you know, having to take another company down. It's about right. We're going to live fully. And that's what, you know, um, Bernie really emphasized. And I, out of giving that talk, I was invited to go speak in India at the World Wellness Congress in India. Bob Proctor, who also talked there at CEO Space, we both went. And where did I meet Bob? I met him at CEO Space. Some of my closest allies and, and associations came from there. So Bernie, man, I just want to say I love you. I'm hurting that you've now transitioned on. And Roger Anthony, who I said I co-wrote Be a Beast book with, um, he, he, we lost him to cancer about five years ago. So he and Bernie are dancing together now. And I feel their spirit because I'm one that believes there is that ability to feel the strength of people, even when they go on. I'm, you know, with my faith, I believe in eternal life. And in that, I believe there's a gift there that we can tap into if we choose to. Everything in life is choice. Yep. I love it. And and you've hit on so many points. I started taking notes, right? <laughs> but, uh, uh, one thing, I, I mean, I loved how you talked about it, and I definitely, I want to uh, talk about Bernie in a second, but how you talked about the um, the mindset and it comes from the, the top down. And that's how Bernie uh, ran CEO space too, because, you know, he, it, it was him. And then he, he brought in September and then he had the faculty and then he had like other members 
who were volunteers, but there were other members who had already been there. So for other new members, I mean, there was multiple layers of support. But I remember one of the first times I heard Richard Branson talking, right? And uh, he had talked about how he went to one of his uh, his space places where he was creating his rockets and he w walked around and he was talking and obviously all the employees and everybody knew who he was. They had to have, right? But uh, so he went up to a janitor and he asked a janitor who was, uh, um, uh, you know, either sweeping or mopping the floor, uh, you know, what do you do here at, at, at uh, you know, Virgin, it was Virgin Atlantic or whatever it was, right? And uh, he says, oh, I'm helping put somebody, I'm helping put in a man in space. So even the janitor who was sweeping the floor knew that what he was doing, his part of what he was doing was part of the whole. This had to be done along with all the other things needed to be done too. And that was one of the first things that got me about true leaders. And, and that was, that was, he wasn't even, you know, he, he's probably in England somewhere and that company is over here, but he has created such a leadership system. And that is also what Bernie has done. I remember when I had him on a guest here, he's been on uh, my other show as well too. I mean, he literally, normally I come on and I talk to people and we have a little banter. Hi, where are you calling in from? How are you feeling? Right? <laughs> I'm telling you to go back. I, I, I just redid the episode the other day because you know, one, he has, the, like, like you said, the, the vision. He has such a geo, you know, a macro and a micro economic and geopolitical viewpoint that is just, you just sit there and you're listening to him talk and you're like, who is this, right? But so, and, and I've done that in person, right? But then when, when he came on the show, it was like, boom, there was like five minutes straight before I got a word in. I was like, and uh, so where are you calling in from? No, <laughs> But, but he, he was on fire, and uh, but that, you know, I, I miss him too. And what really got me was I was sending them the clips, right? And the clips of the show, the MP3, the MP4, and I was sending them the clips. And um, I'm saying, oh, it was great, Bernie. You had mentioned coming on maybe quarterly. Let's talk about that in September. You know, you have an open invitation. That was like four days into, I didn't even realize, I, I knew that he was sick from the other thing because I saw him a picture on Facebook, but it, it never even dawned on me how sick, and it never even dawned on me that he had COVID. And then, you know, here I am talking about, yeah, you, you got an open invitation, and then it was like three days later, a week later, pow, he's gone. I was like, whoa. Yeah, it hit me, as I say, I know it's real, but when you have a friend like that, go it makes it even more real so now, i'm not living in fear i'm just living in smart cautious yeah. i'd rather err on the side of caution rather than and i think where the where we as i said earlier where the problem is is that we're making it political this is not political let's not make it political then just you know err on the side for me you know what what do i have to lose if i err on the side of of, of caution what do i have to lose if i don't <laughs> That's a lot more. But I love what you said about Bernie and what you the story you said about Richard Branson, because yeah. just even what three weeks ago, I, I uh, lectured for CEO space. It's all virtual right now. And I did the whole week. And, you know, um, the next week I get a, a text from Bernie going, Dave, you knocked it out of the park. Thank you so much. You just nailed it. Now, you know, that's just Bernie. That's leadership. Yeah. You know, what does that do? You know, you go, wow, that's really, someone cares, right? Then you talk about Richard Branson, who goes all the way down to making everyone feel like they have an important role to, to play. Yeah. I, I had never heard Richard Branson. I got invited to speak at the McCormick Center in Chicago. This is a few years ago. That's where I heard him speak. And, yeah. and, and so I, I spoke at that event and I guess we didn't know each other back then, yeah. but then I heard him speak and I went, holy moly. This is why, because I, what I was trying to figure out is how can he have so many different companies and have them all successful? That was what I wanted to know. And he yeah. laid out a perfect plan. Is that that thing I talked about earlier, get people around you that you trust and you empower. And so he does that consistently with each company that he starts. He, he empowers those, even the ones sweeping, to feel like I'm a part of this, so everyone is 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 a part of the success of the company. And I think that's something that's a completely overlooked 
way too much in leadership. It's, it's more about me than it is about us. And when you make it more about us, which again, we're going back to Bernie, that's what he, he taught so thoroughly in, in that. And that's why, you know, now I think of it, all the, some great collaborations I've had are people that I met at CEO space because the community, uh, the family of it is, it's an energy that's saying, Hey, let's open up, see how we can work together. Right. Maybe we're in the same field. Maybe there's a way we can, we can help each other rather than compete against each other. My, my son who played professional football, when he was um, quarterback at university of Hawaii, when he went there, there's six quarterbacks vying for the position and June Jones, who's a fantastic coach, you know, he, he set a, a leadership quality of let's, if you make the guy next to you better, you'll be better. My son totally bought into it. He was doing everything in his power to help uh, those other quarterbacks, even though they might take his job. And he would go, but dad, I'm getting better because of it. That's an abundance personality. That's an abundance of, of, of I believe there's an abundance in life. Yep. Scarcity but is it's me and I got to do it my way. And, and then destroy anybody around me. Yeah. That's the leadership. Yeah, go ahead. And that's also a process, though, because I know from myself, speaking from myself in total authenticity, if I go back 10 or 15 years, I would look at another website company or another SEO company, and I would have thought that they were competition. And if they were doing ads or we were in the same room together at a networking event, I'm like, you know, why are we here? Who are they talking to? I could have got that. You know, I had that. And then when I started going, I started to realize that, well, He's a website company, but he doesn't do SEO. He's an SEO company, but he doesn't do websites. I do the opposite. Now we feed each other. And instead of us passing off something to somebody else and, and our client is done when we're done, now we live on in, in maybe a potential referral fee and the client is getting vetted services. So they're happy. So then I decided that the mentality, my, my business has, has literally tripled since I started incorporating you know, that mentality. And, and a lot of it comes from CEO space, you know, uh, Rainmaker, Habits of Warrior Conference. There's a, a secret knock. I mean, there's a whole, you know, like five or six different events that I go to. City Summit was a great one. I mean, I've met so many amazing people that I never would. And that's another thing. You've got to pay up to show up to blow up. You've got to be in the room with these people. And in order to, you know, because if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. <laughs> You know, and, and also seek. I, I love it when uh, Greg Reed and several other people talk about uh, seek counsel, not advice. So, you know, you want to go to somebody who's uh, who's been there and done that in some some, you know, in, is, 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 if you can specifically in the area you have, like in your case, athletes, no matter what level they're on, can reach out to you because you have been and including you know, business leaders because of all the other stuff, but you've been there, you've done that. Whereas you wouldn't ask your broke brother-in-law for financial advice, right? So, um, so, but I've learned so much from going to these places. And just like you said, as you were talking about how somebody helped you write that book, how that was another member of these groups. I think about almost every single guest I've had on Success Secrets Revealed, uh, you know, minus maybe three, I met at one of these events, either CEO space, one of these events. So it's all, none of them, none of them that have been on this show live within a hundred miles of me. Well, and, and, and the one that does, I'm sorry, Trish Murray, who lives up in New Hampshire, who's a doctor, she came on the show. She's a CEO space member and a client. So, it, you know what I mean? So she, <laughs> Well, you know what's so funny? <laughs> when you said that, I was trying to think like, where did we meet? Because everything you talked about, I've lectured at. You know, yeah. I've, 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 I've been a keynote at Secret Knot and I learn wherever I go. One thing that Greg uh, Reed said that I really held on, you know, real, it, was, it goes right to what you're saying. He said, hey, if I'm gonna go climb Mount Kilimanjaro, I'm not going to go climb it with someone who's, you know, uh, my tour guide has never been to the top. Right. I'm going to go with someone who knows every step along the way. And I thought about that. That's exactly right. Well, business is the same way. If you had a degree of success, I mean, I know from my clients, I, you know, the things that I learned that took me years to learn, I yeah. can cut that off, you know, and get them to a place so much quicker because of my experience, right? 
Yep. So I love what Greg said about that, about uh, it really made it made sense to me. And then, you know, it's funny when you met when I mentioned that I lectured at Harvard. Well, where was it? How did that even come about? I was speaking at, at Secret Knock and a gal in the audience got me at, at break and goes, oh, my God, would you come lecture at Harvard? And I had already put in attention that that's something I wanted to do. Wow. So, but you don't have to be on stage. It's, you know, you can be off stage too. Be in the room. These relationships, yep. it, it's 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 so important. And and I, you know, one other thing you said, I realized recently. See, one of the things that you said about, well, I made some changes. Well, what did it take to make those changes? You awareness. Explain awareness. It took an awareness, and then the ability not to hold on. Well, even though you've done it forever this way, you were aware to change and then great things happen. Well, I became aware a while back that, you know, I talk about judgment is the root of keeping you from any degree of the highest level of success, judgment on yourself, judgment on others. And I found that, you know what, I'm guilty. I, cause you, 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 you reminded me, I, I see these guys selling that might be doing something that I do, but I don't like the way they sell. Well, who does that matter, really? And I'm finding that, you know what? There's a competition in me that there's no reason to be. Just do what I do. But it would depress me that I felt they were having the wolves pulled over their eyes in the way you, the people, uh, the way they were selling. But that's not about me. And is it really? No, yeah, I don't know. I realize that I'm just, you know, was judging. And the less I judge, the freer I am to be me and to, to, to provide more value for anybody that I work with. I love it. And, and you reminded me too earlier when you, when you, when you were speaking about uh, the Greg Reed example, uh, Sharon Lecter, uh, the first week of this show, I had on Alex Stern, Dave Corbin, Greg Reed, uh, Frank Shankowitz and Sharon Lecter. Those were my first five guests. And then, you know, the next week was equally as powerful. But I remember something she said, and I don't know, I don't know if she created it or she paraphrased it from someone else. But she said, um, smart people learn from other people from their own mistakes. Geniuses learn from other people's mistakes. So and and so to me that that's amazing. So you know what I mean? You can make your mistakes and keep making them and learn from them and go through all those trials or tribulations. But a genius will learn from someone else's mistakes, and that all ties into getting into a mentor or into a group or a program. And uh, I know you were talking about an amazing program that you're going to offer the listeners uh, to uh, a chance and. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I love it. People have to, to, to just have an open mind and, and just allow things in an abundance mentality. Once you can get out of that scarcity mentality, I mean, just the pressure. I mean, it just, it, it's just a different mentality. And, and I'm kind of new. I'm less than a decade old into it, even though, um, you know what I mean, 29. You know, you know, willing to, you know, you know, willing to step out of your comfort zone. I, if you, let's see, which way behind me here, I've got the presidential merit award from the Grammys. Now, why did I get that? Cause I did something that's never been done in the music industry, but was I comfortable doing it? No, because everyone said that can't be done. That's impossible. Well, what it was only impossible until we did it. I did it with a good friend of mine, Phil Ehart, who's the founder of the rock group, Kansas and the drummer for Kansas. And we became friends and we had a friend come down with cancer. And we said, we're going to get all the musicians to donate their time. Well, back in 1978, when we dreamed this up, it had never been done before. And all the record companies said, you'll never get anybody in music to donate their time for anything. Well, in, in 81, when we did the first one, we had Queen, we had Santana, we had, of course, Kansas. We had every major act and the music industry was going, oh, they are willing to do that. But it took someone to say, even when everyone's telling you no, and it was, it, it, we could have had major egg on our face, but we said it was worth it. You know, what's the value of putting it out there? And it was uncomfortable, you know, putting out something that everyone said was going to be a big, big, big failure. You know, it's so funny that we did the show. We had a tennis. It was called the Music and Tennis. I had got all the other world ranked tennis players to come because they wanted to be with the rockers. Well, all the rockers wanted to be with the tennis players. So that was our advantage. And it was a, a rocker and a tennis player that put it together. But literally, a, 
and I'm not sure if I mentioned this on the show before because I don't talk about the music that much, but I get this guy to come to me. I'm, I'm emceeing the show and goes, hey, we want to go on. I looked at him and said, you you didn't, you weren't here. I don't know. What are you even doing backstage, right? And he kept going, we want to go on. We want to go on. And I'm like, going, what's going on? I finally went to Phil. And I said, Phil, get this guy out of here. How did he even get backstage? He goes, put him on. I said, what do you mean put him on? And then he had me look to the left. I hadn't really been paying attention backstage. It was Queen. <laughs> yeah, it was Queen because they heard it happening was happening. They had to be there. And the guy who was bugging me was uh, Roger. Um, oh, gosh, I just uh, forgot his name right now. But anyway, he's the drummer. And I didn't know what the uh, the drummer Queen looked like. I almost <laughs> made one of my biggest moments of bofos <laughs> or whatever you want to call them. And wow. yet, boom, all of a sudden we had Queen. So everything is possible. Sometimes we feel uncomfortable when we're moving into something and, and, and we might have struggled. But like you say, if we even learn not only from, so you can learn so much from your own mistakes, but if you see other things, like you say, with those that have been to the top, then you're able to utilize that. And it might even, you know, as I say, you might feel uncomfortable. I think with a lot of my clients, I have a, a saying, you know, becoming comfortable being uncomfortable. Because what stops us from our greatest good is that we start getting there, and all of a sudden we get a little bit more out of our comfort zone. Think if you would have stopped and not gone ahead and made that shift. You went, oh, you know what? I'm gonna go back to my comfort zone. So you would have stayed where you were and wouldn't have tripled your business. Yep, yep. And and also for me, I, and, and all the relationships I've made, and like almost everybody I consider a friend now came from those groups. Uh, here it's mostly, you know, family and, you know, business associates, but people who I actually go out to dinner with and have friends with and call because I, I want to, and that, you know, there's no other motivation than, hi, how are you, came from almost every one of these events. So uh, it, it really is uh, about getting out there and, and return on relationship. ROR is so much more important than ROI. If you go into something thinking about what am I getting out of this, and, you know what I mean? It, it, it's so limiting. And that also, I guess, goes back to a scarcity mindset opposed to coming in with, with, with an abundance mindset. It is what it is. Let's just, you know what I mean? So, yeah, no, it's, I, I'm a big believer in that. And I, I think that I have found the more that I have given, not to give to get received, but I've received more as a result. You know, when you're enthusiastic about life and you're enthusiastic about your gifts that you, everyone has a gift, but some of them we shut down. Like you say, if you're in a scarcity mindset, you come in like that. Well, what am I going to get out of this? I paid to be here. I better get this, this, and this. Those are the people that never walk away with anything. Yep. But if they come with an open mind, uh, uh, an experience of how can, what can I learn from this? I think that's the biggest advantage is coming with a mindset of how can I grow rather yeah. than what can I get? Yep. And so I, yeah. And the other people in the room too. It's not just the people on the stages, the people you're sitting next to at break time, you're going to lunch. I mean, some of those people will become your, your joint venture partners, your referral partners, your friends. Uh, you know, there's just no negative to it. Yeah, you know, when you mentioned lunch, it's funny. Um, and I'm going to go back to Bernie again, one of the gifts he had. He would call me from anywhere around the world. He'd be in Finland. He'd be someplace. So it's Dave. Do you have a moment? I'm sitting here with the head of the something federation, and he could really or she could really use your advice right now of the Olympic, you know, thing here. And all of a sudden I'm going, oh, hey, hi, you know, I'm talking somewhere around. He would do it all you know, every so often. I get these calls. He'd be at a lunch someplace. And so I just realized, too, with what you said, I now live in Utah. I always lived in San Diego or around. Not always, but, you know, for the last many years down in San Diego, never thought I could leave the coast. But Bernie, one day I was speaking in L.A. Um, I think it was a secret knock. No, in San Diego. Secret knock. Uh, it was either that or another, but he goes, hey, you got to meet Jeff Flam. Meet Jeff Flam. He's an amazing guy. You guys are going to be great friends. And, 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 and Bernie told the same thing to Jeff. So we had lunch together. And then we find out that he lived in Utah, right? I'm never moving to Utah. Ha, I've lived here three years now. We, <laughs> he, goes, he, goes, he goes, hey, we have horses. Well, that's all my wife had to her. He goes, you got horses? 
Okay, we're going to Utah. So just yeah. to come go riding, just for a weekend of riding some horses, we drive down what's called Walker Lane here, and it's the most, it's, it's like, oh my God, this is the most beautiful place in the world. And I thought, no, I live in the coast. I live in the coast. My wife, after a few days, she looked at me, she goes, Dave, I've lived with you for 36 years on the coast. I want to live in the mountains. How do you respond to that? Last three years have been remarkable. We love being here. And I had to, you know, I had to step out of my comfort zone of going, oh, but I can't live away from the ocean. But how did that happen? Bernie introduced me to someone. And what Bernie's gift was, he was always looking out for anybody who was, he considered his family. His family ended up being anybody involved in CEO space. That's a great way to, to I think, pass his legacy on at this moment, is to open up to, to to, you know, think about that in your own business, as you've talked about, how can I connect people so that we're all winning, all winning. You go back to the abundance personality yep. is how can we all win? And I look at everything that way. I sometimes am guilty. I, you know, will have an emotional come up, emotion come up and I have to take a breath and go, is that serving me or is that getting in my way? People let emotion get in the way of their objective. Well, I, can't be this, I gotta be this, I gotta be that. And then they lose what they truly wanna be because they're letting their emotion distract them from what they truly want to achieve. I love it, man. I love it. And it all goes back to, like you said, to the mindset and uh, being a high performance mindset coach, you would know. Uh, <laughs> in, in, in the last three to five minutes, uh, is there anything you'd like to say? I mean, I too, uh, you know, uh, Bernie has helped me tremendously personally and professionally. Uh, I love, the, you know, the, everything that he set up, but I did notice even like when I went to CEO space, I went a couple of times, but I remember the time I went and it was their last time in Tampa Bay, uh, but the structure he had, I mean, I don't even think September was there until like day two. And because everything was so structured and everything ran so flawlessly, uh, be, you know, it was just like the leadership team knew exactly what to do, when to do it. And they, you know, they, they had the top leaders, then they had the, the past members and they had the faculty. So, I mean, it was everything from coming in to checking in to was, it was just flawless, but it all came from having great leadership from the top down and the mindset of the, 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 the in the silly games. How about the one with the hat? But uh, but but go but 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 that did take you out of your comfort zone, and it got you. I think the whole idea behind it was to get you out of your comfort right. zone to make so when you're talking, you're not giving your you know just some pitch off the top of your head. You're actually coming up with something a little off your. You know what I mean? So yeah. uh, humility is a real gift and a real power for leadership. It's a yep. it's something we need to. So I know we're near the end. You mentioned something that I have during this. Coronavirus, I, I just like, well, how can I serve more? And I coach such high level folks, how can I give something? So I created something called game time. That's what I'm known for before the, you know, an NFL game or, you know, whatever Olympics, I'm doing a thing to get that athlete prepared to be laser sharp. So every Monday I have a call and we have all the videos of Roger and I talked about, which I used to sell for like $197. I just threw that in there. We have uh, Tony Boto, who's brilliant. If you haven't had it on the show, he's brilliant. We have what's called a uh, beast triggers for business, all that audio and everything. So I decided, well, what can I do? And then I do this weekly at Utah time, 12 o'clock, half hour call. And I, and I didn't want to make it so that there was, you know, people are worried about their, their finances. So I said, all right, it's a dollar. Now, if you go keep going on, then you pay a monthly, you know, $45 a month, which is still, you know, I, everyone's staying on so far, but yeah. the, you have a week, you can get everything you want and then just, you know, leave without any questions asked. And that's fine because that's my role of saying, I want to serve and that's abundance personality. There'll be those that will stay. And luckily for me, a lot of those that do stay are leaders already. So then they pass it on to their, you know, their executive teams and that. So it's just another way that I can bring what I've learned over years. I can be your guide up to, you know, as, as Greg Reed said, you know, climbing that steep mountain. I've been there. I've been around a lot of success. And um, 
So I have that. And then I have another thing. It's totally free. We decided to do, and I know you're going to post them in the wake of chaos, which is a video that we did to help people. You know, we talked about awareness. We talked about um, uh, ownership and we talked about empowerment. We just did a video on that to help people through this over 200,000 views. It just really was received incredibly well. And then wow. if you, so if you go to that, it's all free. And then there's a free ebook, which I wrote called change begins within meaning, you know, basically it's the same, a lot of what we've talked about, but really getting honed in on it. It's a very short read, but it was what I was felt like just that's something I wanted to contribute at this time. I love it. And thank you so much. And you're right. I mean, learning, I mean, for a dollar to come in and then even $45 uh, after that, I mean, that's, you know, just a little bit more than a, a gallon of, of, of gas, right? I mean, a tank of gas. So, uh, I mean, look up all, what all you're going to learn, how it's going to benefit you, your family, your friends, your business, your business associates down the line. I mean, uh, it's priceless. They need to at least check it out. So uh, a buck to check it out is, uh, you know, thank you so much for, for offering that to our guests. My, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on, Ron. Uh, like I say, it happened because I think you saw a post of mine. I saw a post of yours and said, hey, I, I really wanted to honor Bernie. So, yes, we, we still leave it in the, in the success secrets are revealed. Hopefully we re reveal some secrets. Yep. But we really honored a man that has had an impact on both of us and many, many people. Yeah, and they can, you know, the good news is even though Bernie is physically not present, there's tons of videos about him out there and people can still join CEO space and listen and learn his mentality that he taught to September for, like you said, eight to 10 years now. He's been tutoring her. So, I mean, uh, you know, there's ways to, to learn and, and uh, enjoy his legacy without him physically being here, although that would be better. But Thank you, Ron. Thank you so much, and you have a great day. You too.